The sculptures that Dalton Getty has been working on for years are amazing. Look at the detail involved in each of these meticulously handcrafted works of art. Look closer. What you might not realize is they're carved out of the lead on the tips of pencils. Yeah, I carved the, the graphite, you know, the, the graphite of pencils, and, um, but I didn't start that small. So I used to do very large pieces on wood first. That's pretty much how it, you know, started. No with a hammer, hammer and a chisel. No pun intended, but you whittled it down. Correct. Whittled it down to some of the most amazing miniature sculptures. One of his first, this hand holding a chalice. Take a look at Elvis. This church scene, a saw, a screw, and this hammer. And then there's this piece entitled the alphabet. Looks like a bunch of small pencils, right? But look on top of each pencil. You'll find each letter of the alphabet from A to Z. It, it's a life-size photograph, so if you were to put a, a pencil in front of it, you can that's tell how that's a, how, exactly how big they are. So this image is, you know, life-size. And it took me an average of one letter per month to create the whole, you know, like the whole alphabet. So it took me about two and a half years to put this collection together. How on earth can something be carved so small with such great detail? It all starts with a pencil. Most Dalton finds on school grounds where he's invited to speak about his art. Is there a brand of pencil that you use or is this a No, yeah. it doesn't, you know, like it, most of the pencils that I have are found objects. And his tools? It's pretty much a sewing needle and a razor blade. Sewing needle and yeah, a razor blade. Very, yeah. Dalton has always been interested in small things. Late 70s actually, early 80s. Um, there was a big talk about how small technology was going to get and the word was nanotechnology. So it kind of gave me an idea, like a push to, you know, to create something really small. And from that I decided, you know, like, oh, how small can I make something using only my eyes and my hands? That was pretty much the idea behind it. It's like a challenge to myself. Projects can take years. Take, for instance, this sculpture. Keep in mind, folks, it's one continuous pencil. There are no breaks in the links. This is one, one, one pencil, but has 22 moving links. 22 moving links? That Freely were, moving links. That were never disconnected? It, no, this is one piece. You carved it that way? One piece, yes. Remember that I removed the wood of the pencil yeah. in the middle of the pencil, so from here to here, that was all the rod of graphite. Over a long period of time, I ended up having the chain completely done in between the two. But they were all, all the links were connected, were welded together. One slip and it's ruined. Even the beating of his heart plays into his work. It's that precise. I inhale and then, you know, slowly I exhale. When I exhale, I'm able to scratch something without the interference of the pounding. So I go back again, inhale, and while I'm exhaling, I can just start scratching, scratching, scratching. So it's the whole process of not only the, you know, being able to do that, but also kind of controlling your breathing. And uh, like I said, you know, because of the pounding of your heart, you can't, I can't, I have to hold it by hand. So it's, it's always a, a touch and give situation between the, the two. His tribute to those killed on 9-11 took 10 years. He shows us an example of what he did. If you look at it, that's a teardrop. Oh, I see it. All right. So I made a memorial to 9-11. And when that event happened, you know, I, I pretty much broke down and cried, cried a lot. And the idea of a teardrop came to my mind and I wanted to do something about it. And then, you know, I, I grabbed my sketchbook and I, you know, I, I, I drew a teardrop in it, in it. And then I, I, you know, I had the idea afterwards to create one teardrop for each person that died. 3,000 teardrops and I did an average I ended up doing an average of one teardrop a day since since the event 
I did an average of 300 teardrops per year. I needed 3,000. It took me 10 years to complete that. And it started out as a pencil like that, and they were all found pencils. And sometimes they were little, you know, short, stubby pencils, sometimes a little longer. So I removed the wood and, you know, I created a teardrop just like that. And at this point, I would break it and put it in my, you know, little film container. All of the teardrops were placed together into one big teardrop. It was unveiled at the New Britain Museum of American Art in 2011. Why do you do it? Give me an answer to that. Why do I do it? Yeah. It's a meditation kind of work that I do. That's how I spend my time. Some people spend their time, you know, watching TV or reading a book or doing something else. I, you know, I do, I, I carve. What is your biggest fear? Is it a pencil sharpener? <laughs> I never, I've, that's another thing. I've never, ever used a pencil sharpener in my life.